welcome, welcome once again to our inspirational moment here at Redeeming Love Christian Church. We're here at Redeeming Love Christian Church. We are called to demonstrate God's love that redeems, unveils, and empowers. I am Elder Mario Smith, and I just want to thank you for sharing a few moments of your time with me as we encourage you in the word. Amen. First off, I just want to ask that you please share this message on Facebook uh, with at least five of your friends. Have them uh, share, it, share it out, spread it out. Let them know what we're doing. That would really help us out to help spread this word and spread what we're doing out to your friends, family, and uh, your influential uh, uh, sphere. Also, I want to ask that you take a moment and just subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Press the like button. Um, just to let us know that you are encouraged, that you're benefiting from what we're doing. And it'll also help the YouTube algorithms and let YouTube know that, hey, this is something meaningful, impactful, and it'll help rate us higher. So other people uh, will have an opportunity to hear this message as well. Amen. Amen. Once again, I just want to thank you again for just giving me a few moments of your time um, uh, uh, today. One of the things I just want to talk about or, or mention is that um, at the beginning of uh, each year, our bishop elect outlines uh, the declaration as God gives it to him for the life of our church, as well as the life of those submitted to this house, submitted to the faith, as well as submitted to uh, the teachings of the Bible. Amen. And uh, I want to encourage you to go back to our watch night service if you don't know the declaration for this year just so that you can um, uh, be aware of that. I won't go into that right now, but I want to encourage you to go back and, and find that video and, and watch that video so you can be aware of the declaration. But the declaration is usually declared during watch night service. And then as we go into the new year, that declaration is outlined or fleshed out throughout the year. Sometimes it takes a few months uh, um, through series, um, but it's actually fleshed out throughout that year. And so this year, the declaration was declared on watch night and our bishop elect began outlining and breaking down the tenets that he outlined in the declaration. And there were eight of them. And so the first one he started out with was divine authority, divine authority. And I want to just talk a bit about divine authority and how as as bishop began to release that and unpack that and explain really the depth of what that actually means how it impacted me and what I actually gathered from it. Um, for those that, that have been keeping up, like I said, I want to encourage you to go back and watch the previous videos. Go back and, and, and watch the, the things as, as Bishop uh, Elect talks through and explains these things because as we get in these moments right here of encouragement, a lot of what we're talking about, a lot of what we're seeing gleams or, or, or piggybacks off of the messaging that uh, he's explained in those Sunday messages. And so one of the things that I got as he began to talk about divine authority, um, I'm reminded of a situation that actually took place uh, fairly recently for me. Um, as, as those that attend our service or attend our, our broadcast, you know, during the time of giving, we'll always have a declaration. And that declaration, we begin to declare certain things that we know that the Lord wants to do. We know that the Lord wants to do. We want the Lord to do in our lives, as well as we repeat back some things that we know the Lord has promised us in his word. And we do this declaration right around offering or, or to uh, lead into offering. And one of the things in the declaration that we declare is checks in the mail. And if anybody had, had watched the previous broadcast, you'll know that uh, Bishop uh, Elect had mentioned uh, uh, the fact that I received a check in the mail uh, right after I declared to him that I was next after he received a check in the mail. So Bishop received a check in the mail and he began to talk about that. And uh, he actually gave the amount of the check that he received. And so if you want to know what that amount was, you can go back and listen to the, his original message on divine authority. And he'll tell you exactly how much the check was. And I remember I began to declare that I'm next. I want to fall in line. I want to receive a check in the mail as I've been declaring week after week. I want to I want to receive some of that same uh, 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 benefit from me being uh, under the authority of this house. And so I began to declare that myself. And 
sure enough, I also received a check in the mail to my surprise. The thing about it is, as I began to read the letter that was attached to the check, I realized that at that moment, divine authority took place that led to a divine release. Now, for those that have been following the progression of our services, you'll know that within this series that Bishop Elect is doing, we're actually moving from divine authority into divine release. But I wanna encourage you right now about divine authority. I wanna encourage you right now about what it means to really be in divine authority because without divine authority, you'll have a challenge entering into a divine release. And so before we get into that, I wanna make sure that we all understand what it means to be in divine authority. And I wanna just use this example I just gave about the check that I received. When I received this check, I began to read the letter and I actually wrote down some of the language that was in the letter because the language of the letter is very important that clued me off to that this was something of God and not of man. So the first point in the letter that, I, that, that rung out to me was the letter said, due to a recent review, it started out with that, due to a recent review, that immediately lets me know that this review didn't have to happen. This review didn't have to take place at this current moment. The review of this letter goes on to say that due to misplaced payments, fees, and other charges, plus additional interest, we have identified that there is money owed to you. This act, this, this thing that this letter is speaking of was from a company that misappropriated some funds 15 years ago. When I began to look at this letter, because I was shocked, this letter was for something that took place in my life 15 years ago. At the time that this took place 15 years ago, I didn't understand my rights. I didn't understand what I should have been privy to or what I should have had access to. And therefore this company with me not knowing what I was supposed to have, misappropriated my funds and, allowed, and, and, and did not allow me access to the money that I was supposed to have access to 15 years ago. But I was not aware of my rights. And a lot of times as Christians, we are unaware of what we have access to through God. So just like in this letter, I didn't know that I had access to this money 15 years ago and it was misappropriated by this company. And so this company sent me this letter saying, Mr. Smith, during this review, we identified that we misappropriated your funds 15 years ago. Let me tell you something. The thing that we have to understand about authority as Christians is there's two aspects of this. And I want to try and take a moment and kind of break this down. When we talk about authority, there's two facets of authority. There is authentication and authorization. And I want to try and explain the difference between the two. Authentication. And both of these words, authentication and authorization, come from the root word auth, A-U-T-H, which is where we get the word authority. But let me explain authentication. Authentication is the process of validating who you are. Authenticating means that I am verifying that you are the person to receive the authorization that's due to you. You have to first be authenticated before you can be authorized. And this is what we need to understand as Christians, a lot of times we'll look at the authorization of a thing. I want this power. I want to be able to do this. But we fail to think about what is it that we have to do to be authenticated to receive this authorization. Authentication is always a process. 
And the thing about it is we see the results of authorization, but don't want to go through the process of authentication. We see the results, but we don't want to go through the process. We want to copy the results, but not copy the process. And so we are declared checks in the mail. Why am I not receiving checks in the mail? The thing about it is you're authorized to receive checks in the mail. However, you have not gone through the authentication process. And so as I began to continue to read this letter, I began to identify things that spoke to me at where I am right now, 15 years later, that I know I wouldn't have understood 15 years ago. Because 15 years ago, I wouldn't I hadn't gone through the process of authentication to be authorized to receive the amount of money that this check had to give me. Now, as I continue to go on, I begin to realize as I begin to read the language in this letter that this letter now means something totally different to me now than it would have if I received this letter 15 years ago. See, 15 years ago. I wouldn't have fully understood Proverbs 13 and 22, where it says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Fifteen years ago, I wouldn't have understood that. But now when I receive this letter, I can look and say Proverbs 13, 22 tells me that the wicked that this company did by misappropriating my funds 15 years ago was stored up for me for a time right now after going through the authentication process. I am now authorized to receive this money. Then I begin to go on and look and the letter begins to say that this amount of money that we owed you since we've had it in our possession for more than 15 years, we've added interest onto this amount of money. We've added interest along 15 years for the amount of money that you were supposed to receive. We've added that. Not only did we add interest onto the money that you were supposed to receive, but we've also added an additional amount of money to compensate you for the fact that we failed to give you access to this money 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I wouldn't have understood the word recompense, which I learned here in this house through the preach word of recompense being the understanding of repayment for damages done or due to you over a period of time. 15 years ago, I wouldn't have understood that in getting this letter. And the final thing that this letter said, showed me was that 15 years ago, here's the amount of money that we owed you. Here's the amount of money that you were supposed to get 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I would have received that small amount of money without the understanding of the word, without the understanding of my authority, without the understanding of the authentication process. And 15 years ago, that amount of money was only 10% of the amount of money that this check was that was presented to me. I want to encourage you on today, redeeming love family, people that are, are outside of the family listening to me, I wanna encourage you on today. Don't look at the results. Look at the process. Divine authority is a process of submitting yourself through the authentication process to one day be authorized to have access to what God tells you that you have access to do. Now, how do you go through the authentication process when it comes to divine authority? You go through the authentication process by getting into God's word following God's commandments, identifying the people that God has put in your life to give you direction, wise counsel, sound judgment. All of these things equate to the authentication process for your authorization. The good thing about this is the Bible tells us what we're authorized to do. The Bible tells us what we have access to do, what the benefits are for following the, the process and teachings of Jesus Christ. The Bible outlines us what the results are. And the thing about it is we can't get so caught up in the results and the benefits and only look to that and ignore the authentication 
process to get to those things. The good thing about God is he wants us to succeed. He wants us. He wants what's good for us and not what's bad. We have to get in line and go through the process to get to the point of benefiting from what we're authorized to. I just want to take this moment and help you right now as we're beginning to move into our discussion on resources. I want to make sure that you get the authentication piece right, the author of uh, the authority that you have. I want to make sure that you get a full understanding of that and how that works, because now is a time that if you have not gone through the full authentication process, you have an opportunity to do that right now. You have an opportunity to get that as we're continuing to learn. It is a learning process and we are here to encourage you through it. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you right now for watching us here at Redeeming Love. And always remember, be encouraged in love. Peace and blessings unto you. Amen. Amen.